India's urban areas churn out a staggering 55 million tons of municipal solid waste every year. Imagine if there was a way of generating electricity that ensures that less of this waste actually reaches our landfills. What if I told you that every time you take out the trash, you're throwing away energy? Proving that fruit and vegetable byproducts can be a potential source of fuel is Green Power Systems, a clean tech company based in Bangalore. Green Power's innovation, the Bio Urja, is probably India's first viable biogas to energy solution. Let's see how Green Power Systems is working towards achieving Shunya waste. Every kitchen generates food scraps for disposal. According to statistics, organic waste constitutes 60% of total municipal waste in India. Rough estimates suggest that a commercial kitchen generates anywhere between 300 to 500 kilograms of kitchen waste daily. Showing us the true value of these scraps is a Bangalore-based company, Green Power Systems. Their innovative Bio Orja plant provides a viable waste to energy solution designed for urban kitchen establishments. How did the Bio Orja plant specifically come about in response to the waste issue that you were trying to address? If you look at the, uh, the waste um, uh, numbers and all, it's a very city-centric problem. Uh, for instance, 25% of the country's waste comes from Delhi, Mumbai and Kolkata alone. And again, within those cities, a very large chunk of the waste comes from the bulk waste generators. So at the same time, if I were to say that we want to enable to start out with only the bulk waste generators in the top cities, that is still realizable. And that is what we started off with. The idea behind Bio Urja was to build a, a viable solution, an economically viable solution for ur uh, urban establishments which they could have at their premises. <laughs> Reaching out to over 1.3 million children in nine states of India, Akshay Patra is one of the largest school meal programs in the world. This kitchen in Bangalore delivers 100,000 meals to children per day, generating a mammoth waste every day. But the Bio Orja plant installed in campus ensures that every organic scrap counts. What are the benefits of this plant? See, after installing the Bio Orja stove, uh, maybe every year we are saving around 14 lakhs uh, as a. We used to purchase almost 70 cylinders every month, and uh, that is almost 10% of our cooking. 90% of our cooking goes through the uh, steam that we generate and 10% of cooking is through the gas. So all this 10% is being saving us. The 15 lakhs which we are saving is feeding for almost uh, 5 lakh children every day. The Bio Orja plant is helping Akshay Patra attain the goal of zero organic waste. But just how does this reactor convert bio waste into bio CNG? Organic waste is coming into this big box like container yeah. what happens next so inside this um, uh, uh, the, the waste is digested over a period of two to two and a half weeks if you look at it you won't get to know what's happening actually it's a controlled reaction but but through our health monitoring we get to know uh, what, what is happening inside the reactor as far as the gas is concerned it goes to one of these two temporary balloons that you have here the moment they are filled up again they have pressure sensors inside the moment they are filled uh, uh, they are filled up uh, it sends a trigger the pressure sensor sends a trigger to the control logic which is the heart of the solution uh, which in turn compresses the gas and stores the gas in a pressure cylinder ne kept next to the kitchen. The Bio Orja plant generates up to 70 kilograms of LPG from one ton of food waste and can be set up in both residential and commercial kitchens. Some of the other key features include the fact that this is a plug-and-play biogas system which needs no civil work. It's unmanned, has no odor, and requires zero consumption of water. Where are your other installations? Give us a sense of just how far you've spread now. So in India, we are there in seven states right now. We have around 12 installations. We are in Andhra Pradesh, where we have four systems, including a mini power plant. We are in Rajasthan, we are in Orissa, we are in Gujarat. Uh, we are setting up in Kerala, Tamil Nadu, and um, 
So the uh, so Pan India we do in North India we have three installations in the South we have the remaining nine and in the next six months we plan to be in four more states including possibly Jammu and Kashmir. It's compact, effective, and economical. Bio Oja has what it takes to whip up a renewable energy solution in Indian kitchens. We have uh, given a solution which which has a zero waste footprint for Akshay Patra, zero fossil fuel footprint, and uh, with respect to waste, again a zero uh, carbon footprint. We're back with Dr. Ranjan Patnaik, Director of the DuPont Knowledge Center at Hyderabad. Dr. Patnaik, let's start with C6 Energy, essentially generating biofuels from seaweed. What do you make of this innovation? How far could it go? I really am very fascinated by the concept of converting uh, something that grows in the sea, that too in the water, and make it to a transportation biofuel that can run cars and motors in the land. And I think if you look at India, the pressure on the land is humongous, not only for economic development that is already going on, the population pressure. So where do we look for the next generation of feedstocks? And in that sense, I think this idea catches the imagination of looking into the oceans, into the sea, and harvesting a unique variety uh, of feedstock and then converting it into biofuels. And this magnitude and the scale is unimaginable. Green power systems, the bio Urja plant, Comment on this innovation and whether or not you think it has widespread potential in India. You know, this one also catches my imagination in the other direction. When you looked at C6 energies, looking into the ocean, the scale of things. And what energy is about is that how you can also create energy in the very localized manner, even in the small. And therefore, the bio urja concept of uh, customizing uh, waste into energy in very localized areas, distributed way, uh, is quite fascinating because it now all of a sudden makes energy accessible to everybody in the world and converting waste into trash at the point of creation also helps quite a bit. The logistics of moving waste and putting it somewhere to dispose it is another challenge that doesn't have to be dealt if a bio orja does scale up in numbers and the adoption rate increases and the economic viability of such a concept comes to fruition, uh, it would be a game changer. Can you imagine a future for India? which is powered entirely, 100% by renewable energy with zero environmental impact, shunya environmental impact? If I were to stretch my imagination and my personal belief would be, why not? If you really think about uh, India being a large country, its energy demands are huge, it's complex, but so are its natural resources. The wind, the energy, the oceans, the biomass availability, and the varieties of biomass, and the magnificent rate at which technology is coming into place, I don't see why it cannot be drilling towards that concept of zero dependence on fossil fuel. We're back with Ravi Kailas of Mitra Energy on the part of Shunya Quest for Zero. Articulate just how important science and technology is for the future of renewables in India. So I would say the renewable energy sector within the larger energy sector has seen the most impact of science of technology and going forward it is going to have even greater impact. Let's take solar for example. The price of solar panels has fallen by a factor of almost 10 times over the last 10 or 15 years. It's a dramatic change. When you compare that the new bids for thermal plants in India, the price for uh, power is around 6 rupees. So we are almost at grid parity even on solar today. This is the power of Shunya quest for zero. What is your vision for India's renewable energy sector in Shunya terms? I think that India has a very realistic chance of being the world superpower in renewable energy. And our quest for zero should be that there are zero countries ahead of India in renewable energy terms. Well, certainly heartening to hear uh, what you have to say about India's renewable future. Thanks very much for joining us on the part of Shunya Quest for Zero. There's no doubt that a larger push is needed to boost renewables in India, where energy demand is expected to double over the next 20 years. India has a long way to go before waste to energy solutions become the preferred method of waste disposal. But over the past half hour, we have seen two innovators who are striving to achieve just that. 
This not just reduces carbon emissions, it also ramps up energy access. That's it on this edition of DuPont Presents, the part of Shunya Quest for Zero, a show that celebrates science and innovation, technologies that could secure our future, human ingenuity that could reduce our challenges to zero. Till next week then, goodbye.